Hello everybody, Nathan here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create long exposure photography pictures, such as these fireworks here, out of a video of fireworks, of course. Um, this tip is handy for anybody who has filmed fireworks, but they couldn't take photographs of it for whatever reason, be it their camera didn't have the options that they needed, or they... Uh, they just couldn't get any good shots because they couldn't get the timing right. So we're going to hop over into Blender and we're just going to delete everything in the scene because we don't actually need anything in the scene here. Um, on this screen, all we really need to do is match up our video resolution. So that's going to be 1920 by 1080, it's full HD and 100%. And then we are going to just jump right over to video editing, add a movie. Um, in this case, this video is still on my SD card from my camera. Would you add a movie? Right. Where was it? Um, basically, we're just going to scrub through till we find a firework blast we like, which I think that one looks good. So we're going to set the start frame right now at frame 18. So start frame of 18. Kind of scrub grub through till that firework ends which I would say around frame 103 we're looking good so we'll set end frame to 103 and then we will jump back to the default screen here and go to the output now because this is going to be putting out a whole bunch of pictures I'm going to change it to JPEG just to save a little on the size um, definitely create a new directory to put these firework pictures in because basically we're just going to be taking all the frames from the video and saving them into one location so we have a bunch of picture files. So with that set up, control F12 to render. It'll take just a little bit of time. Uh, if you have a more powerful computer, it'll be faster than if you have a less powerful computer. Um, and then your footage, higher quality footage, is going to take longer than lower quality. But we'll just let this finish. Oh, actually finished out already. So we will close uh, Blender there. Open up GIMP and the folder that you just saved all the images in. So we have here 103 photos. Um, not building the thumbnails right now because it's loading GIMP. Control A. Oops. Select on the pictures. Control A normally selects all. For some reason, it's not doing that right now. So I'll just highlight them all. And then you actually, in GIMP, we're going to have to create a new image. Uh, so set that up to 1920 by 1080. Okay, and then we're actually going to delete that background layer right away. For whatever reason, if you don't have an image created, you can't drag in a sequence of images to the layer dialog here. But we're just going to let it load up all these pictures, which will take a minute. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so all the images are loaded. In the layers dialog there this is the first one showing we are going to go to multi-layer tools edit attributes of layers start at layer one and at which layer you can put this number as high as you want i'm going to do 300 there's a few less than 100 frames they were like 87 or something so i'm just going to say 300 more than enough all we're really going to be changing here is the layer modes we're going to go from normal to lighten only and then we'll hit ok this is going to take a minute as it goes through and changes the settings on every layer. Basically, it's just adding the light from each layer together to give us this output, which it looks pretty good, you know. Admittedly, you have a lot of speckling in the background. That was from a different firework that was blowing up. There's a little bit of drift because of the wind blowing the firework, but keep in mind, you would have these same effects in a real life situation. Now you do have a couple options you can mess around with here. We could use lighten only, um, we could use screen, which pretty much this is just adding up the brightness from every single layer. In this case it doesn't work very well, um, but if you have footage where it's extremely dark backgrounds you might be able to get away using screen. And then the other one um, 
is soft light, I believe. Nope, take that back. Not soft light. There's three different ones you can use that'll actually work. Oh, addition. Addition, screen, and lighten only. Addition and screen are pretty close. Doesn't always get really blown out. If you're going for a stylized effect, you know, you might want some less than That looks really, really cool. Me personally, not so much. But I leave that up to you for how you want to do it. Um, so again, you drag all of your images or into the layer dialog there. Multi-layer tools under the FX Foundry. Edit attributes of layers. Change the layer mode to lighten only. Again, everything else you can leave alone and you hit OK. Now, there's one small drawback to using this method versus actually photographing. Well, there's two actually. A, you're limited to the resolution of your video. In my case, 1920 by 1080. If I was using this for a desktop wallpaper, that's fine. It's high enough quality, it'll work just okay, and you're never going to notice. Um, so you are limited to the quality of your footage for the resolution. And B, and you don't notice it so much in this image, but your the light trails are not perfectly smooth. You can kind of tell it's dotted, um, and that is because, in this case, this footage was shot at 30 frames a second. So... Again, you don't really notice it in this one. I believe I have another image where you notice it a little bit more. I think my original picture I'll show you here. You notice it a lot more here, actually. Where you can see, if you were using a real camera and taking a picture, you would not get this dot effect. It would just be a smooth line through. Now, personally, I think this actually looks pretty cool. It's like, that looks really sweet. Obviously, I know in real life, the firework looked nothing like this. But effect-wise, I mean, this is a picture I would be proud of to have as my desktop background. And people be like, is that something? Is that CGI? Did you no, this is a real firework. How did you do that? Oh, a little trick, I know. And then you can go on and explain how to do it. Now, if you have the ability, I do recommend shooting in 60 frames a second speed instead of 30 because these little dots you will not notice as much but that's like I said really the only drawback to shooting video and then doing it but with the video you pretty much you get to say so of which frame you start on which frame you end on like on this one I could say you know it's a little too blown out in the center you know I'm going to take out some of these center frames I don't really need the initial explosion so much I'm going to take out a few more here yet and see how that oh okay that's looking better you know I kind of want to have a little bit of open space in the middle taking out some of those dots and you know I don't need quite so much of the trail here you know I've got all these little wispy things I wanted a little more a little more detailed and crisp so I'm gonna turn off some of those layers clean it up a little bit and you get that option you can selectively do any frame you want um, so again I mean if you really wanted you could turn off random frames inside the clip here which again if you're looking for some kind of an artsy effect it'll kind of give you that now if you do decide you want to do something with your layers for the visibility under again FX Foundry um, multi-layer tools or whatever it's called you have visibility show layers or hide layers so you can have all of them set to invisible or visible so if you're going you to have most of them turned off you might want to just go here say hide layers okay turn them all off and then select the ones you want on in my case I want to turn all the layers back on so I'm just going to do that okay so I'm going to kind of wrap this up here I'm actually going to come back with a quick tip in just a second but I have to set that footage up first all right so what I did this time is this was 60 frames a second footage. I already rendered it all out in Blender. I already imported it because it took about two minutes actually to import. There's about 200 frames here. Now, you will notice uh, this one's a little better of a shot than that first one you did because it's already a little cleaner. But these lines look much smoother. But there's something really, really cool you can do 
And this, th admittedly, this does take a while to do. But we're going to do every third for just a few here. Just so you get an idea of what you can do. So I'm doing three layers visible, three layers not visible. And you'll notice, you can already kind of see, you can kind of see where this is going. Um, it is slightly taxing on the CPU. <laughs> so if you have a lesser powerful computer, you may experience quite a bit of lag time. Um, I mean, it is updating the viewport as I go through, and of course the light in operation is a little more taxing than just your standard mix. But here, I've, I think I've done enough so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. You can creatively control the dash pattern. So, say for example, you just wanted to do something creative. You could do like Morse code here. You know, so on this specific footage at 60 frames a second, three frames is pretty good for the lengths of a dash. You could probably go with two frames. Uh, one frame could be like a dot. And I really have no idea at what point. Oh, right here it is. Right there it is. So I have a dot and a dash. So pretty much you could like spell out your name in Morse code doing one layer visible for a dot, three layers visible for a dash, and probably just a spacing of, let's see how that looks here. Yeah, you might want to do a spacing of two for a blank, for a space between, and then one for a dot, two for a dash. You literally can put a secret message into your firework explosion in Morse code. Now, if that's not cool, I don't know what is. Plus, you can, you can go whatever pattern you want. It doesn't have to spell anything in Morse code, of course. You can do whatever you feel like and put this dashed pattern in there. You can get a really cool looking effect doing that. All right, I'm back. Here's the last quick little tidbit. Whoops, I kind of just gave it away there. Um, I'm going to grab three images of fireworks that I have created using this method. Now, as well as being able to combine the colors like we did to get the long exposure type shot here, we can run this exact same here we go. The exact same thing and combine multiple layers of fireworks together. Now it does get kind of tricky when you're trying to move your individual fireworks around because you're never really 100% sure which layer you're clicking on. I don't want that one. I want this untitled PNG. One easy way, if you uh, just set that as the only visible layer, Um, you know, we need to create a background. Um, so we're going to create a new layer here, and we want it to be, we're going to fill it white, even though it does have to be black, because it'll just show up as a black background. We'll throw that at the bottom layer. So you can add together your fireworks to make it look, oh, I don't know, like, your kind of, you know, low-budget fireworks from your small city. I live in St. Francis, Wisconsin. Half the world doesn't know we exist. Okay, a lot more than half the world. Most of the world doesn't know we exist. Small fireworks, okay? Maybe one, two hundred fireworks they shoot off. I can make it look like they did some really cool fireworks by combining a couple different layers. And now, of course, I'm not just limited to layering these on top of each other. I have all of the tools of the, in the world at my disposal. I can say, I want to rotate this one. Rotate it a little bit. And, oh, uh, you know, maybe I want to make this, you could make it larger. I wouldn't really recommend making them bigger because it, at some point you're going to notice, okay, these pictures aren't the same resolution. But scaling them down, that's never a problem because, hey, when it's smaller, it just looks better quality and it'll save out at, you know, the same, uh, it'll end up being the same quality. So I want to kind of pull up a bit more. Like that, I like that. 
So you can make whatever your heart can dream up. Um, additionally, you can, I'm just going to show this really quick because I'm by no means a master of it. You can change the color on your fireworks. Now, admittedly, you lose, you lose some of your, your quality there. Um, you know, because I'm changing things around, I'm, I'm losing quality when I do this. But, if it's for just a real small thing, it's, whoops, real small thing, it's gonna be in the background. Okay, probably don't want to mess with the lightness. Just something small in the background, you know, I can go, I want to add in a really purple firework. I've never seen a firework that purple. I don't even know if they exist. But I'm gonna put one in, and I can. I can now have a lovely purple firework in the background. So you can mess around with your color values and change the color of them as well. So pretty much unlimited options. And then of course, you can put a picture of your smiling face right in smack dab center and say like, employee of the month, send it around as a company memo, even though you didn't get employee of the month. And people are gonna think, whoa, employee of the month, I didn't know they even did this. And you might get fired. So I cannot be held liable if you do get fired for sending around a bogus memo saying you got employee of the month when in fact you did not. But have fun, be creative, uh, yeah, and go crazy. So there you go. Uh, it kind of got longer than I intended it to, but I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Catch you next time.